Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the electrical potential uh, V of R for a really long wire. All right, what we're first going to do to set this problem up here is consider a long wire is shown here next to me. It's going to have a uniform linear charge density. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this problem and show you how you can calculate V of R. We're going to start with just our definition for the difference of potential produced by an electric field in space, which is just our definition here. And then I'm going to show you how to set up the integral to calculate what is the potential as a function of distance away from that wire. What I want to do after that is I want to apply this result and calculate it for a couple problems. So in the first problem, what I'm going to do is just take that result that we've just calculated and we're going to do some numerical answers, okay? Now in problem two, I'm going to do something a little bit different, okay? Problem two is a little bit more complicated. What I have now is a thicker wire. Uh, the wire is going to have a big radius and I'm going to ask you to calculate. I'm going to show you how to calculate the potential when you're outside of that cylinder and also when you're on the inside of that cylinder. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so here is the problem setup over here. What I have here on the right hand side is a wire that has some uniform charge distribution that I uh, characterize with uh, some value lambda. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to find the potential at this distance, which is RF, some, some point here, okay? Now, in all of these problems, you're going to find that the question says, you always know what the electrical potential is, for example, at some other point in space. So we typically call that the reference point. And a lot of times they set that potential at that reference point equal to zero, as we're going to see in the problems later on. All right, and the goal here is basically to, going to get what is the potential at this final point. So what you do here at the beginning is you start by simply writing down how does the potential change if you move from one point to another, okay? And this is basically nothing more than a definition, all right? That is how you define the difference of potential if you move a little displacement DL, Okay, now I'm also going to use a definition in everything that I'm going to do here. And this is just that constant K that appears for the electric fields, for example, um, is equal to one over four pi epsilon zero. It'll just make the electric field definitions just easier to write for me. All right, next thing we do now is, well, we have to consider uh, an electric field produced by a long wire. And for that, I typically just use Gauss's law. I have other videos that will show you how to calculate uh, the videos due to Gauss's law, okay? Now, the expression I have written in terms of that K constant is shown here. It's two times K multiplied by that charge density over the distance away from the wire. Now I've also written an R hat vector and the R hat vector is just a unit vector that points away from the wire, okay? So that is a, a result you hopefully know how to find. All right, the next thing we do now is I'm going to apply that vector inside my definition for the difference of voltage. So that's it, you just simply substitute it down there. Now, uh, I've grouped together a bunch of terms in the bracket, and I'm left here with that scalar product here between the little vector, the unit vector r hat, and my small element of length, my little displacement, as I go from one point to another. All right, so we have to evaluate that scalar product, and that scalar product basically only grabs the component of the displacement along that radial direction, okay? That is really all that scalar product is doing right there. So at the end, you could substitute the r hat dot dl by dr, and that will simplify everything. Now we've gotten rid of all the vectors, which is kind of a good step. Uh, next thing we do now, well, let me just write it out, okay? Uh, it's pretty basic, and that's an important equation, so we're gonna box that up right here. All right, as you move a distance dr, this equation says that you're going to get a drop in voltage, right? You can see right here that it is negative. So dv is going to be a negative number. So the voltage is getting smaller as I move away uh, from some reference point right there. All right, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna integrate this result. So let's go to the next slide and set up that integral. 
All right, so this is my starting point. Uh, the next thing I want to do now is, well, I want to uh, integrate both sides of this expression. So I go ahead and I integrate, and I need to put some limits over there. So my limits are going to be, what is my starting point all the way to my final point? My starting point is going to be this reference point, okay? The point where I actually know the potential value, and my ending point will be this value RF. All right, now, how do you evaluate this? Well, uh, the left-hand side is really, really easy because you're simply integrating dV, so that is nothing more than V. And you have to evaluate V at both of these limits. So you see you have a potential difference here between your final point RF and your reference point, um, and that's it. Now, uh, the right-hand side, well, now that term is uh, can be written like this. I could factor out all the constants. So what I've done now, I've taken out the negative sign, the 2k, and the lambda. These are all constants for this problem. And now I'm left with the integral, again, from the reference point to my final point of 1 over r multiplied by dr. So this one here is pretty straightforward to evaluate. Uh, that simply remember, if you remember this from calculus class, that is the natural log, right? And now you can't forget to substitute in those both of those limits for your integral. So once you do that, you get to my final expression like this, right? So that is the difference of potential on the left-hand side. And here I've substituted in uh, my final point and my initial point inside that natural log function. Now, what you can do now is you could apply the rules for natural logs. You see if I'm taking the difference here between natural log, that simply becomes uh, a ratio of natural logs. Now, we have to think about this reference point right here. Uh, you can't choose uh, the reference point RF equals to zero in this case, right? I can't set this reference point all the way inside that wire because I would have a problem with this final term. You can't define the natural log of zero. It's defined as minus infinity, and you clearly don't want that in your expression. Okay. One other thing to consider is you can't also choose the reference point to be all the way at infinity either. Right? Sometimes we do this for a point charge, but you certainly cannot do it for a long wire. And the reason that is because if you evaluate this final term, the natural log at that reference point, which is really far away, while well, natural log of infinity still gives you infinity. So this is really a key point, but you can choose any other point as long as it falls between zero and infinity. And that is typically what is done for these types of problems. Usually they're gonna say, well, consider the voltage to be equal to zero at a distance of X meters from that center of the wire. All right, so now we put everything together and we get to our final expression right here. We get that the difference of voltage between two points, my final point, and that reference point is equal to this, 2k lambda multiplied by the natural log of RF over R. Now, again, if we just follow any typical problem here, they're typically going to tell us that the voltage at this reference point might be some value. It might be zero, it might be something else. It doesn't matter. But if it's zero, then we just simply get rid of that term right here, and you're left with this common expression that is found in most textbooks. Now you could see right away from this expression, if you would actually substitute R equals to RF in here, you would get the natural log of one, which we know is zero, and that matches what our condition was, that the voltage at that reference point equals to zero. If you are now at a distance that is less than the reference point, right, what's going to happen? Well, that means that this potential right here is going to be a positive number because the natural log of something bigger than one gives me a positive number. Okay, so that's what you're going to get. For distances that are closer to the wire, you expect the potential to be bigger. As I move away now from that reference point, and I, if I'm at a certain distance that is larger than the reference point, that means this ratio here is going to be less than one, and that makes that natural log a negative number. So in this case, you would get a potential that is less than zero. All right, let's go now and apply this result and look at our problems in more detail. All right, here is the first problem here. We have an infinite line of charge that has a linear density of 2.3 microcoulomb per meter lies along this y-axis. The question is, find the electrical potential at distances from the line of charge of 2 meters, 4 meters, and 12 meters. And we're going to assume here that we choose V equals to zero at a distance of 3.5 meters away from the line of charge. 
This here is our reference voltage, okay? And also, this here is simply the reference point. Okay, now if you go back to our equation, right, it said that the potential at any distance was 2k lambda multiplied by the natural log of that reference point and divided by now the distance r. And that's it, that's all. So all we have to do now in all of these separate cases is simply substitute in our values. So the potential here for this first one, I would write 2. My k constant is roughly 9 times 10 to the 9. Uh, my linear charge density now is 2.3 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. I want to convert that into coulombs per meter. And now I have the natural log expression for the first case here. Well, the reference point is always my 3.5 meters. And now here I divide by 2. All right, if I substitute that in the calculator, I should get a pretty large number, 23,200 volts. All right, the potential now uh, for the next case, again, everything looks to be kind of similar, right? The only thing that changes is now that distance. So all of these are simply constants. We just uh, repeat them. And here I get the natural log of 3.5 over four in this case. Now this is a fraction that is a number that's less than one. Therefore, I expect to get a negative number. So this will be roughly 5530 volts uh, negative. And then for the last case, again, just repeating uh, everything here, 9 times 10 to the 9, uh, charge density 2.3, 10 to the minus 6, and now natural log of my reference point 3.5 divided by 12. Now in this case, I get roughly minus 51,000 volts. All right, so this is kind of a straightforward application of the formula we derived in the first part. Let's go to problem 2 now. All right, here's problem two. A very long aluminum cylinder with radius r has a charge per unit length lambda, okay? A point which is located at a distance of two r away uh, from the axis of the cylinder is designated as the zero of electrical potential. So here I would write V of two r must be equal to zero. This is really my reference point over here, okay? So let me just go ahead and write that. So this is our ref is equal to 2r in this case. All right, we've got two, two parts. Uh, part A says find an expression for the electrical potential V that is valid when you're outside. So if there's any point on the outside, how can I calculate what is V of r? Uh, for part B, it says find an expression for the electrical potential V that's valid when you're inside. What if my point is over here, which is a certain distance r away from the central axis of the cylinder? How would I find what is the potential at this point? All right, so we begin here with part A. Uh, part A is very straightforward. When you're on the outside of the cylinder, my expression is the exact same as the wire expression that I derived in the first part. So I simply have V of R is equal to 2K lambda multiplied by the natural log of this reference point divided by the distance R that I am considering. Now in this case, I am told that my reference point is 2R. So this expression right here simply boils down to natural log of 2R divided by R. And that gives me the electrical potential at any distance, okay, as long as uh, R is bigger than the radius of the wire. All right, uh, for part B now, we want to find what is the potential here on the inside. Now, there's some very key words to this problem right here. We're told it's an aluminum cylinder right there. So right away, once you read that problem, you should automatically know that the field anywhere on the inside of a conductor has to be zero on the inside. Okay. Uh, so that means that there can't be any change of potential here anywhere on the inside, right? Because remember our expression says dV, the change of potential is minus E dot dL. So it means that, well, it doesn't matter what the path you take to go from the surface anywhere to that final point, since the field is zero, there can't be any change in the electrical potential anywhere inside the conductor. So dV is equal to zero. Guess what that means? That means that the conductor is an equipotential. If you know the value at anywhere 
on the conductor, it's the same everywhere. It's an equipotential. So what we're going to do here is simply find the value at the surface. And if you can find the value of V at the surface, then it has to be the same value everywhere throughout this volume of this aluminum cylinder. And what you can do now is to find the value right at the surface is you simply want to find what is the value of the potential at the radius. And for that, I can actually use this top equation. And what I get here is 2k lambda multiplied by the natural log of 2r divided by big R now. That's the value at the surface. Now you simply cancel out these terms, uh, both r's leave, and you're left with my final expression, that the potential anywhere inside this cylinder is given by this constant value. Notice it does not depend on little r anymore. It's simply this value. Okay, and here you can calculate this given these other constants. All right, so this is anywhere for uh, the radius less than or equal to uh, the radius of that cylinder. All right, folks, that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about calculating the potential for long cylinders. We'll see you next time.